In this video, I'm going to be discussing some common pathologies or common impairments that you might find in somebody with temporal mandibular dysfunction or TMD. Now, we're going to dissect each of these in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes, but I want to just read through these briefly real quick so I can make a couple important points. The first pathology we're going to look at is when there's cervical or thoracic or scapular issues that are masquerading as TMD. So the person has jaw pain, but it's not the jaw that's the primary issue. The primary issue is that there's something going on with the neck or the thoracic spine or the scapulas, etc. Okay? So down here at the bottom right, we see somebody with very significant upper cross syndrome. So we've got excessive kyphosis at the thoracic spine. We have rounding of the shoulders forward, excessive scapular protraction, and then there is cervical protraction. That's certainly excessive here in this picture. And what that does is it places a lot of stress on the temporomandibular joint. And so if you put a lot of stress on the temporomandibular joint, over time, it can create pain in that area. So what do we do? Do we directly treat the TMJ? Not necessarily, unless there's other issues there. What we want to do is work on the neck. For example, in a person with a posture like this, uh, they may have tightness of the suboccipital muscle group in the posterior upper cervical spine. Uh, they probably have scapular retractor weakness, so working on scapular retraction, TheraBand rows, those kind of exercises to strengthen the middle trapezius, the rhomboids, etc. And they likely also have tightness of the scapular protractors, probably some tightness of the pecs as well. And so in general, the treatment for this is going to be stretches for the tight muscles like pec minor, pec major, the suboccipitals, and then a lot in the neck also can become tight, upper traps, levator scapulae and the scalenes. And then also strengthening of those muscles that help pull the shoulder blades back into retraction. We've got the rhomboids, the middle traps, and even the lower traps to some extent are going to be weak in patients with chronic posturing like this. And you could even consider strengthening the paraspinals of the thoracic spine. Again, exercises like supermans are great for this. Also, the deep neck flexor group is probably going to be weak in a patient like this. So you'd want to do a deep neck flexor endurance test, and if they're weak, uh, then you can do deep neck flexor endurance training. In general, you're going to work on posture with these patients. So things to help pull their thoracic spine up, things to help pull their neck out of protraction more into a retracted or neutral position, right? And if you treat all these impairments, sometimes the TMJ issue goes away because it really wasn't a TMJ issue as the primary problem. It was just creating a secondary TMJ issue, which was really just pain due to increased stress on the TMJ itself. Okay? The person can also have a TMJ muscular issue, and we're mainly thinking about the mastication muscles, so temporalis, masseter, and the medial and lateral pterygoids. Those muscles could be weak. They could also be tight and they could have myofascial pain and trigger points. So what do you do about muscular issues? Well, if the muscle's weak, you strengthen it. And what you're seeing right here is isometric strengthening of the muscles that promote mandibular depression. And we'll talk more about isometric strengthening in a future video, so make sure to watch out for that. If the muscles are tight, well, you can do stretches. We'll also go over that later on. And then there's self-massage techniques. And two of the common muscles that are massaged are the masseter, which is shown here on the bottom left, and then the temporalis, shown on the bottom right. And if there's trigger points, you can do techniques for trigger point release, such as ischemic compression of the trigger point, or you can go directly to dry needling, if that is allowed in your clinic and or state. So TMJ muscular issues. A third pathology is capsular stiffness, and under this we can throw in their osteoarthritis because in some cases with arthritis the joint does become very stiff. Now the vast majority of patients that you see with TMD are going to have issues with mouth opening. I just throw this in there because it won't really help very much just because most of the patients have issues with opening, but the capsular pattern of the TMJ is mouth opening is restricted the most. And then that's followed by protrusion and lateral deviation. These two are not going to be restricted as much as mouth opening. Again, it doesn't really help much for most cases, but it is worth saying. Now, when there's stiffness in the TMJ, it's probably going to manifest as hypomobility. And so if somebody has a hypomobile TMJ, 
what do we do? We mobilize it and or manipulate it. Now up here at the top is one example of a TMJ mobilization. We'll be going over this in future videos. There's other ways to mobilize the TMJ that don't require a thumb or finger inside the mouth. Okay? And then down here, you actually see the pre-manipulative position for a TMJ manipulation. Again, I plan in future videos at some point to go over the technique for that. And then the last thing to look for is biopsychosocial pathologies like stress, anxiety, depression. It is very unlikely that these things alone will cause TMD. But these other things that we talked about are strongly associated with biopsychosocial components. And if they have biopsychosocial components, then you can address that with cognitive behavioral therapy. And that's not the job of the physical therapist, but it could be your job to refer somebody to that practitioner. Stress anxiety reduction techniques, that actually is within the scope of physical therapy. And in general, this will involve a multidisciplinary approach if these things over here on the left are significant enough. And then finally down here, I can't emphasize enough that especially with TMD, you want to find the specific impairments and then target those impairments. There is no cookie cutter recipe approach for TMD. Every TMD patient is going to be a little bit different. You might have some patients that have a disc pathology and some that don't. And within those patients, they're going to have a scattering of all these things right here that we just talked about. So find the specific impairments and target those. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of some of the basic things that you might find in a TMD exam. And in the next few videos, we're going to be going over some other pathologies that pertain to the articular disc. Join us then. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.